Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I'm your yarn host, Jennifer. Oh, today we're going to talk about some stuff. <laughs> I had to make notes because I just did. Alright, so first thing I wanted to cover, to, to discuss with you. Alright, well first we, I should probably talk to you about this. Because <laughs> I know I'm going to be asked. If you don't know what this is, check out the video where I show this, I will link it below in the description box. This is not a pattern. It's not. It may be in the future when I have time to think. <laughs> but this is made out of the um, Wims Merino. I remembered from Furls. And I love this yarn. It is so squishy. So anyway, I just put it on to like, you know, judge up my outfit a little bit to feel pretty. So I wanted to talk to you about my Crojo. I wanted to discuss because I posted a video by the time you see this it will probably be the week before last I posted a video about my crojo and time management and how I was stressing out and how I was having problems and, and issues and all that and um, yeah I wanted to revisit that because I'm feeling better <laughs> I'm feeling better I was definitely overloading myself I was just, I was putting too much pressure on myself and I stepped out of that and I, I was able to look at it from an outsider perspective because I stopped everything. You, a lot of you guys had some really amazing advice for me and I followed some of it and some of it I was already doing. So we'll discuss that today, but I also want to talk to you about, I'm going to show you what I have been making. <laughs> so I will also say this, I'm wheezy today. I'm also sniffly. My allergies are in full force and it's, it's okay. I'm fine. I don't have anything. It's just, I'm severely congested and it's affecting my asthma issues a little bit. So I am absolutely wheezy and I am absolutely fine. It should, this is, it happens this time of year. It actually happens several times a year, <laughs> several times during the year. I am fine, but yes, I am wheezy. So with that being said, I wanted to discuss now, I told you guys I was having issues with my Crojo for several days. I could not figure out what to make or what to start or what to do. And I was getting so frustrated with myself. And I was getting down on myself because I was pressuring myself. Like, you got to do this for the channel. You got to do that for the channel. And I had this huge to-do list. And I had stuff for the channel that has either been requested of me requested for me to show things that I want to show you guys and that long that list keeps getting longer okay and then I had a list of things I want to make for the people that I love and care about Christmas presents or things I want to make for people to make them feel special or just that list and then I had well I want to make this I want to make this and then Jada and Stitches released a new um, summer cover top thing and I'm in love with it and I want to make it. So that went on the list. So the, these lists are constantly growing. And I was like, well, I need to do this. And I, and I was stressing myself out and I was putting pressure on myself. And well, you need to, well, you need to. And so finally I wrote myself a note and I actually taped it to the inside of one of my notebooks. And it says, stop pushing yourself. It's okay to take a day off. Or a week off find joy in your craft money is nice but it will not make you happy and that's in reference to constantly keep making videos to earn a month to earn money to earn a profit to get keep the channel viable to keep all of that it's not just about the money but it was about the pressure of the channel needs to the channel needs this you know I took a step back and I breathed I did not make anything for five days. Now, if any of you know me or have been around for a long time, I knit, crochet, or weave, or sew every single day and twice on Sundays. <laughs> I mean, not really, but every day. I do a craft every single day. I have something in my hands. 
which is fine if you're doing it for the joy of doing it, but not when you're doing it to put and, and, and pressure and all that stuff. So five days and it wasn't intentional because I kept starting projects and messing up and frogging it. I pulled out, I pulled out one of these that I got from my friend Amy sent me some yarn for my birthday. I pulled this out and I started with the intention of making Jada's new shirt, new beach cover up because I know it was going to the beach. And I started it and I messed it up so royally, not because it was a hard pattern, but because my brain was fried. I put three hours in and frogged the whole thing. That was frustrating. That happened twice in this five day period where I would put two, three hours in and frog the whole thing. And I was so burned out that I just could not concentrate. I could not think I could not do. And so I'm sitting in here frustrated with myself because why can't I do this? I don't understand why my brain's not working. And on day five, <laughs> I was like, just do something. I could not even fathom making a washcloth. And a matter of fact, I started a dish towel and had to frog it. I could not make a simple washcloth. It was not in my brain to do that. So I have this lovely basket. It is filled with these little Premier Yarns bonbons. These came in a box either last year or the year before. And it was a box of a bunch of these and it was like $12. And I bought all of the colorway boxes that they had, which was like three boxes or maybe four boxes. And then I was gifted a couple. So I have a ton of these little bonbons and they're sitting in a basket. I have nothing to do with them. I was like, I don't know what, I, because I do not want to make another motif anything ever. I just don't, I don't enjoy it. So that's why they've been sitting there because I just, I don't, ugh, I don't want to make another motif anything. So I was like, I grabbed my basket. I was like, just start with a granny square. Just start with a granny square that doesn't have to be anything and has no intention of being anything. Just so that you're doing something with your hands because my mind needs to be busy. I need to be doing something or anxiety and stress builds up for life issues. Just make a granny square. That's all you need to do. So I made a granny square. <laughs> and then I was like, well, that's beautiful. You can make another one of those. So I made a stack. I made a stack. I have no intention of doing anything with these. If someday in the future they turn into something brilliant. It is just fine. If they just are granny squares for the rest of my life, they're just granny squares. Sorry about the interruption. We have a worker over to do some repair work around the house. I don't remember what I was saying. The dogs probably will bark because there's a stranger in the yard. So I made a stack of these. And if I'm repeating myself, I apologize. I don't remember how many are here, but not putting pressure on myself and just making granny squares with no intention of what these are going to be. Meaning I grab a random color and I make a granny square. And there are scraps that are going to be left over from this that I'm collecting in a bag. And again, I don't know what I'm going to do with all those little tiny scraps. Those scraps probably will get donated to a project. Not no. They will probably be donated, period. I don't mess with little tiny scraps. And I also don't use them for stuffing. Just because I don't feel like dealing with it. I would rather just buy. Because I buy my fluff for Amigurumi and stuff at thrift stores. I always find it at thrift stores. And so, you know, yeah. So that, I started doing that. And then I was like, okay, I can do this. I can crochet. The pressure started coming off with every granny square that I added to the pile. And I started to feel like, okay, this is okay. I can do this. It's all right. I don't have to pressure myself. And I started to breathe again. 
And then when I started to feel like, oh, I don't want to crochet, I put the crochet away. And I was not picking up knitting needles because knitting to me, <laughs> don't get me wrong, I love knitting. Knitting is very much a brain activity. I have to think when I'm knitting because I'm not to the point where I can just, I can knit without looking, no problem. But I still have to be conscious of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. It's just how it, it's just how it goes. So after I started working on those, I told you guys in Friday's video, we went to Reconsidered Goods and I showed you the headband that I made. Very easy, very simple. Didn't care what it looked like. Didn't care if I showed this to you guys. I made it to hold my hair back and it did the job. <laughs> so then I was like, all right, I'm accomplishing things again. No pressure on myself whatsoever. So then I need to figure out what I do with everything because then I started like making more stuff. And then during all this process, I was like, all right, I am going to finish the weaving project that I started. You guys may remember this is what it looked like. That's actually the back side. I needed to finish this because I have not finished it and I wanted to just get it off the loom so I could maybe do something different. This is not anything spectacular. This was me just playing with the loom. This is not ever going to be anything more than what it was. My intention honestly was to make this into a play placemat. And then after a while I was like, I don't want to make this into a placemat. I just don't because what I'm going to do is one placemat. So I'm like, I got so far in it. I was like, it's pretty, like I can end it. There's no rules to this. Why, why am I putting pressure on myself about this? This should be an enjoyable experience, right? And there's other yarns that I want to weave with and I can't because I have one little loom and this project is stuck on it. So it started off looking like this. Now I was going down this way, right? Which this is absolutely beautiful. Then I ended it and I left the strings and I braided them and knotted them. But now the idea is to hang it this way. So it's going to hang this way. And by the way, I did some like decreasing. <laughs> I did some unique things here to make it curve up like this. And so it will hang from these and it will just hang like this. And I think this is beautiful. And this reminds me of my time in the Southwest. So I think it's beautiful and I could even embroider something on here or I could put like a patch or something on here. I can do anything I want with this, but I think this is pretty and weaving has no rhyme or reason. It's just supposed to be what you feel or what you want it to be. And I have a hard time crossing over between I'm making something that is useful to I'm making an art thing. <laughs> so... That is one of the things I'm learning with weaving is I have to make it art. It doesn't have to be functional, but I think this is pretty. And I really like the braids here. I think it's neat. I think it's neat. And I finished a weave project. So that again is successful. This is very uh, thick fabric. I think it's beautiful. And honestly, if I don't want to hang this up, this will make, because this is cotton, well, it's a cotton something blend. But this would make a very nice mat for my teapot, my teacups, where I'm having tea. So, it's another thing I finished, that I accomplished, that I'm proud of. So then, so then, <laughs> you guys have seen this yarn. I got this at 757 Creative, I think. I got this at one of the reuse stores. It was either the Richmond one or the... The one that's in Norfolk and it was a full skein so we got this and I love this yarn and I wanted to make something out of it and again I pulled it out during my crojo meltdown and I started to crochet and I was like this is not turning out right so I frogged the whole thing and then I ended up balling it up and I was like I want to use this yarn I don't know what it wants to be and every time I showed Mr. Cinnamon, he goes, that looks like a pinata. You should make it a pinata, which irritated me because I don't want to make a pinata. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to make an amigurumi out of it. I'm going to make a pinata. 
keep that in mind. This is what I started with the idea I was making a pinata. This is not perfect. I don't care that it's not perfect. And he is funky. This is completely freehand from inside my head. He was meant to be a donkey. I was going to make a donkey pinata. <laughs> but after I made his face, I made his legs first. And then I made his face and I put the, the eyeballs on him. And I was like, he's not a donkey. He's a dog. So he decided he wanted to be a dog. And honestly, this looks like the Alabrije version of Oreo. She reminds me of Oreo. Or Dante from Coco. Which is ironic because that was in my Coco project bag. And so I was like, alright, the Alabrije spirits have made him into a dog. He's a dog. I, I love this. I think this is so cute. And like I said, he is not perfect. But if you ever watch the movie Coco, it's a Disney movie. I suggest watching Coco. You are going to cry. It is an amazing movie. This looks like Dante. Ruffled head and everything. Completely freehand. No idea that he was going to be a dog. Or that he was going to be an Alabrije. But that's what it turned out. And honestly, this dog reminds me of Oreo a lot. And like I said, it's not perfect. His butt is a little funky. And the girls said he either looks like a zebra or he looks like a, um, oh, what is that other animal? I can't remember what it's called. It is related, the only related animal to a zebra, not a zebra, a giraffe. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. But they said it kind of looks like that too, but isn't it cute? I like him. And I'm glad Mr. Cinnamon wanted him to be a pinata because this would not have happened without the weird pinata idea. I just think he, that's my little Oreo Zalabrie. Thank you. So, my Crojo is back, people. My Crojo is back. <laughs> so, he's going to sit on my desk. And then, I featured some yarn last week from Premiere. It is called Chao Moreno. And I featured it at the same time as Creative Grandma. Well, we were like 10 hours apart. She, she, her video came up before mine. Not that that matters. And so I was getting a lot of creative grandma said, creative grandma said, creative grandma said. So I trust Glenda immensely. I trust her opinion. I value her opinion. I value her reviews. Absolutely go watch her review on the Chow Marino because you may feel like she does. That is perfectly okay. And this is what I said. It's like, it is okay that we have difference of opinions. It's fine. But I also have only unboxed the yarn. I hadn't worked with it. So I wanted to see what my opinion working with the yarn was. So I immediately balled it up and started working with it. So I could double check to make sure that I like this yarn. <clears throat> I have started a shawl. My opinion has not changed of this yarn. I still like it. I'm enjoying working with it, but it is alpaca. <laughs> There's alpaca in this. Some people do not like alpaca. I am not a huge fan of alpaca personally. Alpaca has these wonderful little hairs that stick up that remind me of dog hair or like cat whiskers. And so I have a tendency to want to pluck those out and get rid of them because they irritate me. But that's the alpaca and that's very typical for alpaca yarn. So if that bothers you, you're not going to like this yarn. I am enjoying working with this. I'm not going to buy hordes of it because I don't really, I don't use alpaca very often. But if you like alpaca, you're going to like this yarn. It's squishy. It's plump. It's very, I do suggest using a bigger hook size than what they say, which is what I'm doing. And it works beautifully with my furls hook. I'm not having problems. I actually even did a little TikTok video to show that it actually frogs pretty decent. I mean, sometimes the hairs will snag a little bit, but you just got to break the, the hair and then it continues frogging. But yeah, I think it's beautiful. I think it's going to be a beautiful scarf, shawl, whatever it finishes out to be. The yarn is working lovely. I am not going to wear it because I find alpaca itchy, but... If you like alpaca, you want to wear it. I mean, hey. So that's my... I feel so relieved that I'm actually able to make stuff again. I feel so refreshed and renewed 
from getting away, not just getting away from the house, but getting away from the craft and the work side of me. And I am definitely going to be setting working hours for myself. And that, that just means I need to only check comments during certain hours during the day. I need to answer emails during certain times of the day. And that's a problem for me because I am on the social medias like randomly throughout the day and night just checking. And I need to set work hours. And there are also a lot more comments coming into every platform that I am on. I can't keep up with them. I read them, absolutely. But if I went through and hearted everything even, it would be hours and hours every day of just hearting. Just going through and clicking the heart, clicking the heart. Whereas I can kind of skim through the comments and read them. And then every once in a while I'll post a heart just so that I can say that this is the last comment I read. So when I go back, I know that I can read down to that heart. <laughs> and that's how I've been keeping track. So if some of the comments get hearts and a lot of them don't, it's not that I haven't read it. It's not that I'm not acknowledging you. I really appreciate it. I read everything and I try to answer all the questions. But I put the heart so that I can tag which how far down the list I've gotten of comments. So just keep that in mind. I'm I'm still here, guys. I am trying to give you guys everything I can, but I also have to keep it to work hours. So just you know, just trying to set limitations and boundaries for myself, which is not easy at all. And the same thing is gonna go with my crafting, is I'm going to put work hours in with what I'm working on for the channel. And then I am going to try to make time for myself for things that I want to get done or things I want to do for gifts and stuff like that. So that I'm not overworking myself because that's not, that's not helping anybody. It's not, if I, if I can't take care of myself, like how can I take care of anybody else or be there for anybody else? It just doesn't work. So I hope you enjoyed today's Monday video. I have a cool product review coming up. It was actually... <laughs> It was a birthday gift and it's not something I asked for or even wanted but I'm very excited to show you because it was very cool and I don't know how I ever lived without it <laughs> and um we also have some happy mail we're late on the happy mail I also have happy mail in my post office box that I have not went to pick up yet because we've been out of town and just life has been busy so if you sent me something and I haven't showed it yet or acknowledged you yet it's just because I haven't made a video yet I haven't had time but I will try to get that video up sometime this week. And um, I'm reading my notes. I think that's all I have planned for this week so far. So far. <laughs> but I hope you have a fantastic start of your weekend. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.